will move to the threat out of Yemen, where the Iran-backed, Iran-trained Houthi rebel group says it will begin attacking vessels headed to Israel. Israeli media reports that Prime Minister Netanyahu told Biden on the phone this is a grave threat and he expects the U.S. and European allies to handle it, but that the IDF will take military action if needed. The head of the Houthi militia says Israel-bound ships are legitimate targets. The Yemeni armed forces hereby announce the prohibition of the passage of ships heading to the Zionist entity of any nationality if the Gaza Strip does not receive the food and medicine it needs. These ships will become legitimate targets for our armed forces. In our effort to ensure the safety of maritime navigation, we warn all ships and companies against dealing with Israeli ports. With me now is Middle East expert, Dr. Elizabeth Kendall, joining us from the Doha Forum in Qatar. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for being with me. I want to ask first, you know, this is a rebel group vowing to attack cargo vessels and in international waters that headed to Israel. Is this an Israel, Israel problem, something Israel will need to deal with, or is this going to be a global problem? I think what the Houthis are hoping is that they're going to broaden the conflict out beyond just being an Israel problem to being more of a global problem. And as a result, this attack on shipping and on maritime trade is going to push up insurance premiums. It's going to hamper inter international shipping routes. Don't forget there are about 17,000 ships that go through this particular part of the Red Sea every year. So the Houthis are trying to broaden the conflict out beyond just being an Israel problem. Even if uh, there isn't direct attacks, just the threat alone, we've already seen cargo ships and vessels alter their course, alter their routes to avoid uh, being in the areas where the Houthis uh, operate. The threat alone, could this have a devastating impact? And is there any real response to it if they're not actually going to attack, but just issue these threats uh, that may still devastate, as you mentioned, areas of the global economy? The threat is specifically now on maritime traffic because it involves much broader global interest than the drones and the missiles that the Houthis were firing earlier. If you remember, the drones and the missile attacks that the Houthis were launching towards Elat were right at the edges of Houthi capability, which is, we believe, around 2,000 kilometers of range. By now involving this whole coastline along the northern bits of the Red Sea, along that Yemeni coastline, it is much easier for the Houthis to get good results and to worry a constituent part of the international community beyond just Israel so that, as the Houthis perceive it, the actions of Israel in Gaza are going to have knock-on effects for the rest of the world, which will help to pressure Israel into uh, perhaps reigning in its operation. That's their ambition. Elizabeth, you mentioned here uh, the Houthi capabilities, I mean, being able to operate their missiles and their military technology much closer to home. They may have capability, but do they have a plan? I mean, as you alluded to, there are dozens and dozens of cargo ships in this area of the Red Sea daily. What, would this militia have a plan? Would they pirate, would they pirate every ship and ask uh, who the crew is and where this particular cargo vessel is going to? How would they follow through on such a threat like this? Well, there may well be a plan because, in fact, the Houthis were already demonstrating their capabilities. They were uh, putting military materiel in place prior to the October 7th attacks by Hamas. And they had also taken over some of the islands in the Red Sea. So it does look like there's a grander design at work here and that part of the uh, part of the plan had already swung into action prior to the Hamas attacks, which tends towards thinking about this as perhaps part of a broader strategy that the Houthi backers, Iran, had in mind. What in your analysis is the ultimate goal here? Why, why increasingly turn the focus of this rebel movement 
towards Israel, towards attacking Israel, attacking ships. What is the goal of the Houthi movement, and how does this play with their own domestic rebel uh, uh, goals here, their, their, their goals and objectives? Well, that's a very good question. Now, you, you keep mentioning the Houthis as rebels, and that is the perception of the international community. But don't forget that inside Yemen, they control territory in which two-thirds of the Yemeni population now lives. So they are going to have to be part, ultimately, of a governmental power-sharing solution. And what this current stance by the Houthis does for them is that it revives their flagging base. They've now been at war for over nine years, actually for more like 20 years, if you include the first wars that started in 2004. So they're pretty war weary. It revives that flagging base. It also probably gains some broader support in Yemen because they're able to speak out against what's happening to the Palestinian people in a way that the internationally recognized government is not. So it plays to their advantage domestically. It also plays to their advantage internationally and regionally because they are framing themselves as the defenders of the Palestinian people. Dr. Elizabeth Kendall, thank you for joining us on I-24 News.